Hi, I'm Dr. Smith, and today I'm going to talk about speed. Wait a second, Dr. Smith. Are you talking about this kind of speed? Oh, hey, Dr. Jones. No, that's not the kind of speed we're talking about. Hmm. Is it this kind of speed? Actually, no. It's not that kind of speed either. In this case, speed stands for Spinal Emergency Evaluation of Deficits. The Spinal Emergency Evaluation of Deficits, or SPEED, is designed for rapid pre-hospital and ED assessment of patients to determine the severity and level of cervical spinal cord injury. The SPEED exam is a neurological screening exam conducted as part of the secondary survey assessment for every cooperative trauma patient treated in our trauma bay. SPEED is not designed to replace a complete neurological exam, but will provide information that will help speed the evaluation and treatment of patients with a spinal cord injury. SPEED is designed to be a screening examination and should be superseded by the findings of a subsequent complete neurological exam once it can be performed. SPEED uses two simple assessments of motor function and two simple assessments of sensation combined with the location of pain along the spinal cord to determine the level of injury. The motor exam involves two simple assessment techniques, voluntary ankle or toe movement and hand grip are elicited by a verbal request and used to determine a motor score. Let's move on and talk about the sensory examinations. Sensation is assessed by light touch in two areas, the lateral side of the ankle of each foot and at the jugular notch. Scores are assigned as shown. Finally, the presence and location of spinal pain or tenderness is also obtained at one of four levels. Upper cervical, earlobe and above, cervical, below the earlobe to the clavicle, upper thoracic, below the clavicle to the end of the sternum, and lower thoracic lumbar, below the lower end of the sternum to the sacrum. Let's go over each component of the speed test in more detail. Remember that the patient has to be alert and able to follow commands. We recommend incorporating the speed exam into the secondary survey, including its components as part of the head, lower extremity, and posterior back exams. That all makes sense, Dr. Smith. Are there additional steps? Yes. The next component of speed is assessing hand grip strength. Hand grip strength assesses function at the C8 T1 level the patient is asked to squeeze your hand. A strong hand grip is scored as two. A weak hand grip is scored as one. An inability of the patient to grip is scored as zero. Remember the patient has to be awake and cooperative for speed to be performed. The obtunded patient may grip as a reflex. Let's watch a short video that shows this part of speed being performed. Can you squeeze my hands? Good. Note for your evaluation that movement of the ankle or toe evaluates motor function at the L4, L5 level. Ask the patient to wiggle the toes or the entire foot. Normal movement indicates a normal exam. A flicker or minimal voluntary movement of the foot suggests the presence of an incomplete spinal cord injury at this level. The inability to move the ankle or toe suggests a complete spinal cord injury at this level. Remember to perform this assessment on both feet.
The video clip provides an example of this part of the speed exam. Can you move your feet? The second component of speed sensory assessment evaluates sensation at the S1 level. This assessment is performed by lightly rubbing the lateral side of both ankles. If the patient is able to feel touch, a normal score of 2 is given. Altered or diminished sensation gets a score of 1, while the inability to feel touch scores a 0. Let's watch a short video for an example of the sensory exam component of speed. That's right here. The last part of speed is an assessment of pain or tenderness along the spine posteriorly. The presence of pain is obtained by talking to the patient while assessment for tenderness is performed during the log roll. For speed, the location of spinal pain or tenderness is classified in one of four levels, each corresponding to a level of motor deficit, upper cervical, ear lobe, and above, cervical, below the ear lobe to the clavicle, upper thoracic, below the clavicle to the end of the sternum, and lower thoracic and lumbar, below the lower end of the sternum to the sacrum. Make sure that you document the results of the speed exam in your note. A dot phrase is available to help you with this determination. What happens if the speed score is abnormal? When the speed score is abnormal, a complete neurological examination should be performed to confirm the examination findings. Early consultation with the neurosurgical service is the appropriate next step in this setting. To sum up, SPEED is a screening tool to assist in the rapid diagnosis of spinal cord injury. It should be done on all awake and cooperative trauma patients during the secondary survey. Results should be recorded in the medical record and is also used to determine next steps in the plan of care for the patient. If a score of 0 to 1 is observed in any of the exam sections, neurosurgery should be contacted. This concludes the presentation. Thanks for joining us.